In the race against time for the upcoming third orbital test launch of Starship, the entire SpaceX engineering team has joined forces to initiate the first round of repairs, starting with the hardware at stage zero. Especially is a significant upgrade coming from the tank farm area, where Elon Musk has taken the first actions indicating the replacement of all component tanks in this vital location. So, how has the orbital tank farm been changed? Why is SpaceX shifting to these changes? Stay tuned as we dive into this episode of Alpha Tech. Following the excitement of Starship's second orbital launch, activities at Starbase are in full swing as SpaceX engineers work to prepare for the upcoming third Starship launch. The attention of the team is centered on addressing issues that emerged during the recent mission. Specifically, the booster quick disconnect is under scrutiny after sustaining burn damage during the launch, and it seems that it was not fast enough to avoid the effects of the Starship. Engineers are diligently working to rectify any issues, hopeful for a swift and straightforward solution. Simultaneously, the orbital launch table is undergoing thorough inspection to ensure it is in optimal condition for the next launch. This critical component plays a pivotal role in the launch process, and any damage or issues need to be addressed promptly to maintain the launch schedule. In addition to these efforts, Starbase has undergone a particularly huge upgrade. The orbital tank farm is currently in the process of getting a new set of clothes. Alongside the detailed inspectional work of the orbital tank farm, as SpaceX explores potential upgrades to enhance efficiency and recovery capabilities in its upcoming operations, they have also initiated the replacement of the current vertical tanks with a more advanced horizontal design. Earlier this week, we witnessed the arrival of these large horizontal tanks at Starbase. This massive cryo hot dog tank was positioned upon arrival with space for an additional eight tanks. This will be one of the crucial upgrades in preparation for the next Starship launch. However, such a replacement process would require a temporary pause in operations at this site, given the indispensability of these tanks for fundamental procedures like engine spin prime tests. In the interim, SpaceX is likely to persist in addressing damages and hoping for optimal outcomes. Well, if you remember, in the first Starship launch in April, aside from creating a massive fireball at the launch pad, the power of 33 Raptor engines also caused significant damage to the orbital tank farm. Despite protective walls in space, this area couldn't escape the impact of large concrete chunks and shockwave generated by the vertical tanks. Even now, when observing videos of the orbital tank farm, we can still see traces from the first launch and some new, slightly lighter dents from the second Starship launch. To be honest, those vertical tanks might be one of the major mistakes that SpaceX has made. There are quite a few impediments, such as the methane certification challenges, water filling restrictions, and being too close to the launch pad. Horizontal tanks, when put into operation, will be completely shielded by concrete fences surrounding them. Moreover, horizontally oriented tanks are more stable than their vertically positioned counterparts, especially during transportation or seismic concerns. The lower center of gravity also makes horizontal tanks more accessible for maintenance and cleaning purposes. It's more convenient in desired locations and eliminates the hassle of dealing with a tank that is a few inches too tall. They can also be easily customized with additional features like multiple compartments, pumps, and accessories. This makes them ideal applications requiring storage of various chemicals or direct chemical distribution from the tank. Therefore, Elon Musk's decision to transition the entire tank farm system from vertical to horizontal is entirely appropriate. It will undoubtedly address the challenges that have surfaced in this critical area. Indeed, this facility serves as the vital storage hub for the various liquids essential to Starship missions. If fuel is the lifeblood to sustain rockets, then tanks in the tank farm are like the heart of Starship, responsible for transporting and circulating fuel to keep the rocket alive. The vertical tanks are part of the OLS tank farm is the storage area for liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which is used as a propellant for Starship and Super Heavy. Furthermore, liquid hydrogen used for vehicle pressure tests at cryogenic temperatures and water for the deluge system are to be stored at the OLS tank farm. These liquids are stored in huge vertical tanks that have been built by SpaceX at the production site in a procedure that is similar to the stacking of Starship prototypes. In addition to the connection of the suborbital launch tank farm, the OLS tank farm is connected to the orbital launch mount, or OLM, and the launch and integration tower. 
The booster is fueled via a quick disconnect system on the OLM and the upper stage ship is fueled via a quick disconnect arm that is installed on the integration tower. Among them is the orbital tank farm, consisting of eight large vertical tanks. They share a height of about 30 meters, constructed with the same tools and the same type of steel as Starship and Super Heavy. Additionally, there are built tank sleeves, which are the outer covering layer. Measuring around 12 meters wide and 40 meters tall, those cryo shells will enclose all eight SpaceX built tanks, allowing the company to fill the one and a half meter gap between them with an insulating solid gas or some combination of both. With those shells in insulation, SpaceX's custom built Starship tank form should be more than capable of storing cryogenic liquid oxygen and methane for days or even weeks. Starting from the roadside, you can see a solitary liquid oxygen tank followed by two liquid nitrogen tanks. Notably, the tank situated on the far right, initially designated for methane storage, underwent safety tests that failed, leading to its repurposing as a water tank. Moving closer to the orbital launch mount, you'll encounter two more liquid oxygen tanks and an additional pair of water tanks, originally intended for methane storage. Now, you might be wondering, where's the methane stored? It's housed in the horizontal tanks adjacent to the original GSE tanks. In fact, in the past, SpaceX had intended to use vertical tanks to store liquid methane fuel. In 2021, SpaceX installed the second of two vertically built cryogenic liquid methane LCH4 storage tanks manufactured by SpaceX. However, a rough unofficial narrative had been constructed to explain the lack of progress on the farm's fuel half. Namely, in an excellent X-thread, CSI Starbase made a strong case that SpaceX appeared to have designed the first orbital-class Starship tank farm, a compact and pleasingly symmetric set of eight vertical storage tanks without taking into consideration rudimentary Texas regulations for the storage of liquid natural gas and methane. By all appearances, that conclusion was correct, as the farm was visibly violating several rules, namely the requirements that all LCH4 storage be surrounded by six-foot-tall retaining walls and that all associated plumbing not be situated under power cable. As it exists, the LCH4 side of the vertical tank farm violates both of those rules. The end result is that those vertical LCH-4 tanks are not in use. Instead, SpaceX appears to have fully refocused on horizontal tanks. Although those horizontal tanks seem to only store about 100 cubic meters of LCH-4, while the vertical tanks would have stored about 1,800 cubic meters, ensuring safety and meeting those regulations is indeed a wise choice. In short, SpaceX is still putting in maximum effort for significant upgrades to the Phase Zero hardware in Starship. Additionally, Elon Musk has announced that the rocket hardware will be ready in the next three to four weeks. This is likely to be a busy period for SpaceX, but at least it won't be as unpredictable as the first launch. However, SpaceX will also face a challenging issue with the government agencies, as after the test on November 18th, Starship is still considered by the FAA as an anomalous flight. This necessitates a deeper investigation by the FAA, potentially lasting for several months with the involvement of fish and wildlife. SpaceX also has to overcome the FAA's environmental assessment for the third Starship test and submit a modified launch license application to accommodate additional flights. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.